economic review, please do take a moment to, re to review the disclaimer on screen. Please be advised that there is an, in an inherent risk involved in trading the financial markets. You can refer to our website for further details, and if in doubt, please do contact a financial consultant. For Thursday, 20th of June 2019, uh, the main high impact news will primarily f um, affect the United Kingdom. We will have at 10.30 a.m. CET the retail sales month on month for the period of May for the United Kingdom. This is then followed at 1 p.m. by the uh, Bank of England interest rate decision for June, uh, subsequently followed by the Bank of England um, Monetary Policy Committee uh, meeting minutes. And then at 2.30, we've got the U.S. F um, Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing in Index for June. And lastly, at 10 p.m., we have the Bank of England uh, Governor Carney speaking. With regards to the U.K. Uh, retail sales month and month uh, for May, essentially we're looking at the change in the total value of infl inflation-adjusted sales at the retail level, uh, a primary indicator for consumer spending and an overall uh, sense of, of of looking at the economic activity uh, with regards to the UK economy. We've seen growth in the clothing, non-store uh, non re retailing and fuel was offset by falls in, uh, in all other ma uh, main sectors. Um, year on year, we've seen retail uh, go up in value by 5.2%, uh, slowing down from a 6.7% rise in March, uh, however beating the market cons consensus of a 4.6% increase. Um, the previous figure was 0.0%. Uh, forecast is at minus 0.5%, so slightly worse than expected figure. If we do see that um, the the actual number release is there, about, it's close to the to the forecasted figure. Uh, that will be that will be bearish for the for the uh, UK economy, and potentially we could see then see uh, for the weakness in the pound uh, as well as the FTSE index, at least in the short term. Um, going on over to the next bit of data, which refers to the UK Bank of England interest rate decision. Uh, this will be uh, quite a very, um, a very important um, data to look at, being that the that they previously uh, unanimous, unanimously voted to hold the bank rate at 0.5% during their May policy meeting, and reaffirmed their pledge to a gradual and limited raise rise over the forecast period. Uh, despite the slowdown in global growth and ongoing Brexit uncertainties. So at the moment, we've got the previous rate at 0.75%. The forecast is at 0.75%, so still remains unchanged. Um, so therefore, we, we should be expecting that sort of stance to remain, um, despite the uncertainties that, that we are seeing uh, across the globe. Then it's, uh, that in itself will then lead to the, the meeting minutes, um, which will then provide the, the, the insights as to why um, the decision was, was made to set the interest rates at that level. Uh, the, follow, the following uh, bit of data that then comes out refers to the U.S. Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Index. This will assess the, the, re the re relative level of general business conditions in Philadelphia. Uh, for May, it rose to 16.6. Um, it went from a figure of 16.6 in May of 2019 from the 8.5 uh, 8 uh, level in the previous month, which was well above the market expectation of nine, um, reaching an all-time, reaching this, the highest level since uh, since January of 2019. We've also seen increases in shipments from 27.6 uh, from 18.4 in April, as well as a employment rise. Uh, from 14.7 to 18.2, so we are do, we are seeing um, improvements um, in in several sectors, and this gives us a very good indication of the six-month outlook uh, for the Philadelphia region, which we can, in a sense, uh, superimpose on the U.S. economy. The uh, previous figure was 16.6%. The forecast is on is at 10.6 percent. So, we could potentially be seeing the the effects of the trade dispute between China uh, and the U.S. Ha coming into play here. Also, bear in mind that yesterday we did have the Fed, uh, um, the FOMC, um, 
the, the Fed um, a meeting yesterday as to where to set rates. Um, they decided to keep rates uh, unchanged at 2.5%. And as a result, we did see a dollar index uh, drop in value from 0.42% uh, um, as a result. In, in, in the early hours of today's trading, we've, also, we've seen that continual decline in the dollar index. It's currently down 0.52% uh, as a result. So we are seeing that p position to try and make the, the, the US dollar a bit more competitive. Um, and as a result, we are seeing that weakness uh, um, come into the dollar index. So we've also seen the strength as a result uh, in the S&P 500, uh, currently trading around 29.48. It's approaching its all-time highs at 29.59 and a quarter. So um, if the... U.S. maintains a stance on its interest rate hikes, or, um, then we, we should perhaps see uh, the, the um, S&P and, and other indices rise in value. We've also saw last night um, the uh, crude oil inventories come um, better than expected, and as a result, we did see um, we did see prices. Uh, um, rise in value by 0.42%, and as of this morning, it's up 0.52%. So that continual strength uh, that we are seeing in the um, in, in crude oil. Conversely, we did see also the um, dollar CAD slip, and we've seen that uh, continual weakness in the dollar CAD as, as well um, in early hours of today's trading. Um, let's have a quick look at the charts and see exactly what the market conditions are um, uh, this uh, this morning. On screen, you do see the um, the uh, chart for W for uh, crude oil. As I mentioned, um, it rose in value by 0.57%, uh, closing at 54.36. This morning, we've seen prices go as high as 55.84. Um, that's a 1.88% um, increase um, in the value of crude per barrel. Um, that bullish bias remains intact. Um, if we do look at the dollar CAD as a result of the uh, better than expected um, um, report on crude, we did see that slip that I mentioned previously. Uh, dollar CAD was down by 0.71%. It's broken below its lows of yesterday at uh, 132.76, and it's currently trading at 132.21. Uh, uh, it's declined by by 0.5 percent this morning. So it's very it's uh, it is there is the expectation that at least we could potentially see the 1.32 handle um, at some point uh, in today's trading. So it would be a key um, key area to be looking at. Um, for, um, for for the dollar CAD. In terms of the S&P 500, um, we've seen it. It's currently trading at um, 29.45, uh, 29.45, 29.51. The previous high was at 29.59. So we are approaching the all-time highs on the S&P. Uh, that could be a potential point to actually see profit taking um, and um, perhaps some sort of a consolidation. But if we do, but since we've got the um, the decision uh, to, to, by the Fed to maintain rates, we can be, we, we potentially will see that further strength come in um, in, in the um, S&P 500. Let's just have a quick look at uh, at the DAX and see exactly where the DAX is approaching at the moment. Its all-time highs was at 12,454. It's currently trading at 12,412, um, having risen uh, by 0.81% this morning. With regards to the uh, FTSE 100, we are seeing uh, the FTSE not performing so well. Obviously, we have that data, a lot of data coming out today. So if we do see um, the decision to maintain interest rates unchanged at 0.5%, and um, that could uh, bode uh, bring about some very some interesting uh, movement on the on the FTSE and on the pound as a whole. Let's just have a quick look on, on the intraday time frame to see what sort of uh, uh, technical patterns we can see as a result. Uh, we've got this sort of um, bullish uh, bear, uh, bullish flag forming at the moment. On the four-hour time frame, if I do shift over to the two-hour time frame, what I'll be looking for is to see a close above 
this level at, um, let's just write that there. If we do see a close of, uh, above 74.34, I'd be looking to go long on on the on the FTSE stops would be at 7380 uh, and I'd be targeting 7500 as a result so in terms of risk to reward ratios I'd be looking at something along these lines of um, let's just put that in there okay risk to reward would be a 1.28 to 1 so slightly a slightly better than um, a 1 to 1 risk uh, on the FTSE 100 with regards to the um, pound, on the pound dollar, let's have a look on the daily time frame. We've seen from yesterday's activity, uh, we've had all, all week the um, President Draghi speaking uh, and uh, making a lot of announcements on the Teltro 3 program. Last night, yesterday's trading, we did see the the, uh, the pound dollar rise in value by 0.71%. As of this morning, it's up by 0.5%. Uh, on an intraday basis, to see if we can actually capitalize on that uh, bullish uh, momentum that we are seeing intraday. Um, what I'd be looking to see is perhaps um, a, a pullback of sorts and, and then look at to take uh, trades to the long side. I'd be looking at perhaps the 126.74 as a potential opportunity to go long. We are trading currently at 127 uh, at 127.13. Um, 13. But any sort of pullbacks today would be a very good opportunity to actually go long on the pound. And I'd be targeting, um, at the very least, 128 uh, to about 128.50. Um, that would essentially um, bring us to the end of today's um, economic review. Please do take a moment to uh, review the disclaimer on screen. If you do have any queries, you can contact us by uh, via the, the various mediums on screen and we'll be more than delighted to help you in any queries you may have. We'd like to take this moment to thank you for your time and we wish you the very best in your trading and investing decisions. All the very best.